Hi, welcome back to the uh, Ichthian Forge. I'm Eric. Um, I'm going to start on a new project here. Uh, I've been working on my, my dagger project. You can find that in uh, another um, series of videos that I'm doing. Uh, but it's time to lay that one aside for just a little bit while I get parts ready for it. Uh, in the meantime, I don't know how many people have seen the History Channel television show Forged in Fire. I've seen one episode. The only reason I've seen just one is because we don't have cable or satellite and one of them is free. So uh, I'll wait until it comes out on DVD probably and buy it. But the one episode that I saw was the episode where they made the chakra. And in that episode there was uh, all four of the smiths that were on that show. I, if I had to spare money and was looking for a knife and didn't make them myself, I would, I would uh, check in each of these four. Uh, makers. I thought they were all good makers. Uh, some of them ran into hard times. But anyway, there was one guy on there, the guy that actually won it, was a guy by the name of Chris, who his method of smithing spoke to me uh, quite a bit. Because when he went back to his home shop to make the shop room, he didn't have this big fancy shop. He had probably more than I have, honestly. But he didn't have this big fancy studio setup. He and and he didn't have everything he really needed to make this chakram, and yet he turned around and won the the, the competition. Um, he did what he he did the best he could with what he had, and what he did was outstanding. But in that video, in that in that show, to get to the final round, he used a, a farrier's rasp to make a, a knife that really caught my attention. So what I'm going to be doing today, and what I've already started on, this isn't the one that I'm working on here, um, but just for an example, a friend of mine used to be a, uh, a farrier, and now he's given me some of his rasps and things to, to use up and then to turn into blades. And they're actually still a little sharp, but this particular farrier's rasp is about uh, 14, a little over 14 inches long from, from the tip to the shoulders as almost 17 inches long all the way to the end of the tank. I'm not decided yet on whether or not I'm going to use the tank. I don't know yet. We'll, we'll find out as I go along, as I forge it out. And it's about one and three quarter inches wide. Now what I want to do is to be able to bring this out and to make it one and a half inches wide. And so the length at the end of that will determine whether or not I use the tank. I, again, I don't know yet. Uh, Chris had, this is not the knife that Chris produced. Uh, this is inspired by his knife. Uh, I will be doing my own thing on it. He he did a, a full tanked knife. I'm planning to do a hidden tanked knife, hopefully with some bronze fittings. We'll see how that works. Um, but anyway, hopefully this is going to be a fun project. I've actually already started on it. This is the the knife that I'm really, or the, the rasp that I'm really forging on. And it's a little, it's about 14 and a half inches now, starting to bring it down to a nice tip. And one good thing about the farrier's rasp is that they're rounded. Um, when it's not rounded like this, you end up puckering, if you're not real careful, puckering the ends, you have to round it before you, before you start to bring it out into a point. Or you'll pucker it and you're going to lose that material because it's, it's, it's just useless, really. Several things about, or another thing about, um, rasps and files. I've tried to work on them before and I've left, I've, I've put rasps about this length in the fire and brought back about that much of it. You want to talk about not making your day. You leave half of your project in the fire. So all of these um, teeth on both sides, all of this is a stress riser and all of that is a place for it to break. Uh, after I forged this one last time, I went ahead and annealed it, the, the section that was forged. I'm doing my level best to avoid stress fractures and things. I'm not planning to forge in all of the edge bevels on this because I want to grind away a lot of this stuff. I want to have uh, steeper angles on this one than on the, the knife that has inspired it. Uh, so a lot of this will be done on the grinder, but there is still plenty of work to be done in the forge. And that's what we're going to get to. Um, in just a minute I'll be heating the, the, the rasp up and we'll get started from there. Okay. Okay. All right, let's see if we can draw this out a little bit. Start bringing it down to a better point. I don't want to overheat this uh, for the very reasons I said a little earlier that all of these um, grooves are stress risers and I don't want a reason to uh, 
for this blade to crack and fall apart on me. So anyway, here we go. See if we can uh, turn this into a knife. All right. Well, my uh, camera girl bolted on me, and so I'm having to do this on my own. I would uh, take it from her pay, but I don't pay her. So, well, that's kind of out of the question. <laughs> Anyway, uh, this is where I have the, uh, the knife out to now. It started out at uh, 16 and 7 eighths inches long uh, with the original tang. I did leave the original tang for now, and I will leave most of it. But now it's out at 20 and a half inches. Um, you can see the, uh, the rasp there beside it to, uh, to give some scale as to what has happened to it. What I've got to do now, or what I want to do now, uh, I might have to quit because the sun has reached a not so sweet spot in the sky where it's affecting my uh, how I'm seeing the colors on the anvil. Um, still trying to get everything roofed in here and haven't had much success at that either. But uh, anyway, what I want to do with this blade now is here on the tip, I would like to, uh, well not just on the tip, sorry for the little jolt there, but uh, throughout the blade I would like to make kind of a recurve to it, but here at the tip, I want to come bring that down a little more you see it's already sort of a drop point as it is I want to bring that down a little more so to give it a little more maybe a little more elegance as it's uh, as it swoops back up and creating a belly in this area that will uh, uh, recurve up in here some but anyway that's what I want to be working on next uh, if the Sun is friendly enough on me and if uh, if I continue to hold out here in the forge it's kind of hot today but not as hot as it has been but anyway, I'll give an update soon. We'll see what comes of it. All right, well, I've just about done all that I can do on this blade today. Um, you see I put a little bit of a recurve in it, and I did bring down the tip a little more. Uh, what I'm going to do with this next is uh, anneal it, and this is actually going to be a couple of steps because it's so long, and um, my forge is not that long, obviously. So to, to make certain that everything is nice and annealed on this blade, it's going to go through two or three different heats, which will take two or three different days. Um, you might notice also that the tang is a little bit long. What I'm looking for on this is actually six inches, and I think I got about eight right now. Um, I want plenty of meat left there so that I can um, fit handles and fittings and so forth to make sure I've got what I need before I go cutting everything off. Um, but that will be shorter in the end product. Um, but anyway, yeah, this blade is on to the annealing processes. I may not need to anneal this, but I've gotten into the habit of doing it with saw steel that I work with. Um, and that stuff is incredibly hard, whereas this may or may not harden the same as that. Um, so anyway, that's, that's what I'll be doing next with this, just to make sure that everything is nice and soft, to get a good grind on it. Um, and hopefully I'll be ready to grind very shortly. Uh, we'll see how all of that works out, and we'll check again with you soon.